So it's time. It's time to move out. I don't know if you got kicked out. I don't know if it's just time for you to, you know, move on. But anyway, you are getting your first apartment or maybe it's your second or third. But this video is going to give you some tips, some things to think about. Really consider before you even start the process. There are a lot of things that you need to do to prepare for an apartment. Like this is a legit big deal. This is my first apartment and I did it all by myself. So of course I made a few mistakes. I'm considering my situation. I had to move across the country from a job, blah, blah, blah. But I'm here to give you guys some tips and advice and things to consider um, just in the whole process. That will hopefully make the transition smooth for you. First, you want to do your research. There are a lot of really convenient apps out there. There's Apartment List, Zillow, Apartment Finder, uh, Craigslist if you're careful. If you know Sketch from Not Sketch, go with Craigslist. But if you feel like you don't know, just leave it alone. You want to go with those first. They're super convenient and this allows you to be able to search for apartments and look at some of the surface information before you even go to visit these places. And that goes into the next thing. You don't want to give, you don't want to pay any application fees or anything like that before you view the property. View most to my knowledge, most tours are free, so you can actually call them. You know, say, Hey, I want to come check out your property. Can we set up an appointment? Whatever. Um, some of them will just, you know, they do have like on site tour tours, tour guides, they do have on site tour guides, so you may be able to just show up and be like, Hey, can you show me what you got? It might work out for you, but anyway, my point is, if you go onto these websites, um, a lot of you know, those apps I mentioned, Apartment Lazilla, blah blah blah. Um, they do give you a link to go ahead and apply or, you know, if you're really interested, they go ahead and schedule tours for you and things like that. But I'm telling you, do not, you know, spend an application fee or do not pay that 25 or 50 bucks if you don't know you're going to get approved for the apartment. And especially if you're just starting to look, it's not necessary because if you don't, if you decide not to go with that, they're not going to give you that back. Um, and we'll go over like some of the refundable and non-refundable fees that I've had to experience or that I was exposed to. And that'll um, kind of help better or further explain um, what I mean when I say like application fee if you don't know exactly what that is. So you want to like address any fees, anything that you have to pay, you want to know. So again, with all of those sites I mentioned earlier, like Zillow and Apartment Finder and Apartment List, they typically give you like the deposit fee, the pet, depo the pet deposit fee, um, administration fees, and things like that. Now I'll just break down which each one is. The deposit fee or whatever usually it's refundable now it depends on how long your lease might be a lot of apartments they typically start with a four month lease and end with like a 14 month lease there's a big gap in there um and they differ depending on the area depending on the complex whatever um same with housing i don't know i'm just in an apartment so i can't really speak for like condos and housing but i'll try to get you know i'll try to make it as as uh you call it What's the word? What's the word? Oh my god, do you know how you try to think of a word and it kills you? Okay, give me a minute. I'll try to make it as comparable, relatable, I don't know, I'm going to go with relatable, as possible. Anywho, um, fees. So your deposit, your security deposit, that's what they call it. This is, depending on your credit, if you have really bad credit or a poor credit or no credit, then most likely your deposit will be a little bit higher and it is refundable. Um, I don't know how that works again. And then if you have good credit, they may just charge you like a small deposit, but it's not refundable. So that is that varies. That could be anything. But just know that um, from what I've seen, de security deposits vary from like $100 to like $600. Um, I was blessed with a discount, so I only had to pay half. And it's still refundable, so that's great. You want to know what the security deposit is, whether you're going to get that money back. You know when it, when is it a uh, when when is it jeopardized? When is your refundable security deposit jeopardized? A lot of apartment complexes will not refund you that security deposit if you damage the property. Anytime you make a security deposit, it's to kind of secure your spot in case you fuck up or you do anything you know that you didn't say you were going to do. They're like, okay, this is our money now. So as long as you, you know, keep the apartment clean, don't break anything, usually you can get your security deposit back. Number two is the administration fees. Now, I still don't know what the point of these are. Um, I think this is just like to handle paperwork and get all the paper and shit done, which I feel like is their job anyway, but that's beyond me. I'm not in real estate. Uh, don't shoot the messenger. But enough rules. Um, administration fees are typically not that much. Not, I know they're not usually more than the security deposit. Uh, my admin fee was like 40 bucks, um, and that's non-refundable. 
um, but some can go up to probably like $200. So just remember that is a thing as well. If you have pets, of course, just like you have a security deposit, your pet also has one because they have, I mean, they're like a different species. Like they have to have their own stuff, which is weird. I don't have a pet, but I am considering um, when I move out of this place. So yeah, if you do have a pet, you want to know what the pet deposit and fees are also. If you're moving within the same city or state, there might be like a cable transfer fee or like an electric bill transfer fee. Those are typically really small, the smallest I've seen. I didn't have to do that because I moved to a whole different state and I had to get a whole new um, like internet provider, so that didn't apply to me. But if you're moving like down the street, then they're probably just going to charge you like 10 or 20 bucks to transfer your cable from this place to that place. Um, and that might be in addition to what the actual com the cable company charges you. So, yeah. So forgive me if I left out any fees, but I believe that's it, like security deposit, administration fees, pets if you have them, <clears throat> and transfer fees. So when you're going to view a property, do not be afraid to take pictures and videos. They, There's no law or anything that says that you cannot do that. Again, unless it's somebody's like home and they're, they still have it furnished and their family is in there, that might be, you know, a little um, iffy. But if it's just an apartment, if it's a new apartment, or even if it's old, but if it's empty, you know, take your camera or your phone and just take pictures or take a video. Um, I prefer video just because you can kind of get everything in one motion. Um, you just rewatch the video. Um, and, and of course you can take pic well with my phone, I have an iPhone. You can take photos from the video. So you can just take snapshots if you needed to. But this kind of gives you a uh, means to compare any apartment that you've toured. If you don't want to have to go back or you just want to see like, okay, I don't really remember what the bathroom looked like in this one, but I know what it looks like in that one. Then you just go back and watch the video. And then there you go. You'll have that um, for, to compare when you are actually looking for your apartment. In the process of doing your research, you're probably going to come up with some questions such as um, if you're considering bringing a pet on their property, what are their pet policies? What's the deposit for a pet? What happens if the pet shits on the carpet? What happens if the pet, you know, breaks something? I don't know. <laughs> just these are questions you need to have in mind before you go visit a property that way you can address and get these questions answered by the tenant or you know the tour guide or whoever right away and you don't have to really wait for questions to be answered via email or you don't really have to research for them you get it straight from the horse's mouth and that gives you means to can again compare to any other property that you might have viewed and decide which is best for you now I am not entirely sure if they allow this but if you can go ahead and obtain a copy of the lease um, or any kind of documentation that they would want you to sign upon, you know, becoming a resident. See if you can go ahead and get a copy of that. Because when I say reading the lease is so mother important. I did not read my entire lease um, because it's like 50 pages. And I'm just like, okay, you know, let me just look for the, the stuff that I know I'm going to, you know, it's going to be an issue or whatever the case may be. No, read your lease. And I know it's like, I mean, literally, just read it, because you're going to have to sign it like eight times, and there's a reason for that, because there's different sections, and things switch up, their verbiage is like sometimes really um, confusing, and it's not very transparent. So if you can, this goes along with trying to get everything before you even, you know, submit an application fee. Um, if you can get a copy of the lease, you can read things, and then if you have any questions, again, you can go ahead and address those before you make that move, and before you do the application fee, or whatever that is really important and that's important for you know if even if they don't give it to you before you become a resident when you actually do get your lease read it they don't there's no time limit on when you have to sign your lease like if you need to move in tomorrow that just means you need to read the lease by tomorrow but I mean if you have time sit and read the lease you know and even if there's something sketch if you have a lawyer already I would even have your lawyer read it um, I don't have a lawyer they're kind of expensive nowadays, but if you have one, go over it with them because there might be something that you didn't catch that your lawyer is like, okay, maybe we need to like renegotiate this because there is always room for negotiation within a lease or a contract. So remember that when you are going into these places and there may be something that you um, don't really necessarily agree with, but you know this is where you really want to live. Ask about it and see if they're willing to make a, you know, a compromise or a change. Um, for example, with me, um, my car was towed. Because I moved from Georgia to Colorado and my plates were expired for like 15 days. Now they usually allow a 30 day grace period, but that's only for Colorado license plates. I did not know that. All I knew was everybody's like, oh yeah, you're going to get 30 days. It'll be fine because my registration sticker thing had to come in the mail. So per my lease agreement, my car was towed because it had expired tags. I had to pay like 300 bucks 
You don't want those problems. You do not want them problems. Seriously. Just read your lease and know what's what. So that way if you do um, experience anything that's like a violation of the lease or shit hits the fan, you'll know exactly what will happen or anything like that. And that's also important for terminating your lease if you decide you don't want to, you know, stay for 12 months or you have to go back home or something in six months. You want to know what the consequences are for terminating the lease and the process of what you have to do to make it happen and not look bad on your end. Next, you want to consider the amenities that you need. And by amenities, I mean like, um, do you want laundry, any unit laundry? Like, do you want a washer and dryer inside your apartment? Are you willing to, you know, pay $3 for one load at the community washer, like in the same apartment complex, but you still have to transport your laundry because it's not actually inside of your apartment? Um, those are things you need to think about also. And most of the apps and things that I mentioned before do let you sort your options based on amenities. Like, again, if you want any unit laundry, if you want a balcony, if you want a parking, if you want an elevator, stuff like that. They do let you kind of sort your options based on that. So you can kind of roll out any apartments that don't meet your requirements. Now, um, that goes along with knowing what you can afford. If you have a low budget and you know for a fact that with the cost of living and, you know, the cost of um, rent in that area... It's going to be a little bit more expensive to have some of those things. That's something to consider as well because you do want to make sure that you're staying in your budget. Know what you can afford. You know, there's a difference, again, between knowing, you know, what you want and what you need or what you can afford, basically. If you want, like, all this stuff that's going to cost you extra and you know you can't afford that, don't even go and look for it because you're setting yourself up. And it's kind of like a tease. I mean, it's nice to go and look for future, but if you know you can't afford that right now, just don't even do that to yourself because that's what I was doing. I was looking at apartments way above my budget. So when I got my apartment, you know, it was like kind of a downgrade from what I was mentally prepared for. But, you know, it is still good for me and it has everything that I need for now. So just, again, know that. Know what you can afford. That's super important. I should have said that first. Um, because typically a lot of properties do require you to have like at least two or three times the rent. Um, or for you to make that much, two or three times the rent a month just to make sure that you're going to be able to pay them and do whatever else you have to do. Because a lot of people, you know, they go and get these apartments that they can't afford. And then when it's, when it's time to pay rent, it's like, you know, well, I have this excuse and that excuse. They don't want to hear that. They want to know for sure that you can pay your rent on time in full and not have any, like, delays or any complaints or any reasons why you can't do that. So I had to crack out my list here because I was kind of going off on a tangent with, idea, with you know, suggestions and things. But um, the next thing I think is important is when you actually get your apartment, you know, when you after you've signed the lease, you know, you have your moving date, make sure to do a walkthrough with the tenant. They want to, I mean, they usually give you a checklist of things that they give you or things that are, you know, working before you move in. So that way when you move out, they can make sure that, you know, it's not something that you damaged or whatever the case may be. So this kind of goes along with the whole getting a video. When you go in to do your walkthrough with the tenant, you can get that on video as well. You can point out anything that looks like it might be broken. If you have carpet, if you notice a little tiny stain on the carpet that you feel like they may blame you for in the future, point that out to the tenant and say, you know, hey, and even get it on video. Hey, you know, you, you do see this stain here. Like, I'm not tripping, right? Like, don't try to put the shit on me, like, in 12 months when I move out. That's okay. Like, there's no way. You cannot be too aggressive when it comes to getting an apartment because it's literally you renting someone else's space that they're going to rent to someone else. And they have all of these guidelines and things that they go by. And they want to make sure that you're not screwing up their property. And you want to make sure that they're not blaming you or falsely accusing you of screwing up something that was already messed up. So that's why that's important. Definitely do a full walkthrough with the tenant or with someone from the property so you can make sure that they are seeing what you are seeing and you're also getting it on video so yeah keep that in mind so yes when you're finally all moved in you got all the paperwork and you got all the legal stuff done you want to worry about your furniture and your cleaning supplies and all of the essentials and basics that you need to actually function with your own apartment so, I'm here to tell you, um, I did not have any furniture. I moved, again, across the country, so I just had enough room in my little Nissan Versa to pack, you know, the essentials, clothes, um, pretty much everything that I need. Um, I didn't have room for really any furniture. I did bring a TV in my car and, like, a TV stand, which is really a piano stand, but it worked, um, and just small stuff. So, it's okay to not have furniture right away. I mean, you're getting your own apartment. That's a huge accomplishment. So, don't feel bad if you don't have a couch or if you have to sleep on an air mattress for a month. You know, it's fine. Don't.
feel pressure to go and buy all this expensive furniture especially don't go and get like a um not a lease but like a loan like one of these furniture places like rent center or errands where they kind of trick you and they're renting this really beautiful furniture and it's hella expensive you're paying like three times as much as what you would pay if you found it and actually bought it at like an outlet you know or some kind of furniture outlet so um, don't feel pressure to get furniture right away that will come as long as you have a bed whether it's an air mattress or an actual bed or whatever and you know just the essentials that's pretty much all you need because everything else is pretty I mean a chair you might need like one chair I don't know but um like with me I went and got a chair like a computer chair from Goodwill for like seven dollars because I didn't have a couch for a few months um but if I wanted to sit and watch TV and not actually be in the bed I had a chair and it was like seven dollars so Again, you can like shop around for used furniture. I don't recommend getting a used bed. I don't know how comfortable you are with that. If you are comfortable with getting a used bed, definitely go for it. However, you know, make sure it's coming from a clean place. You know, that's up to you completely. But um, again, if when it does come time to get furniture, you know, definitely look for used furniture because especially like lightly used or some of these outlets have used furniture, refurbished, that's the word they use. Um, or like your local, um, there might be like a yard sale page on Facebook or anything like that. Just look out and see who's selling furniture, who's giving it away for free sometimes. So um, a lot of people do give away brand new furniture for free, which is, you know, amazing. But you have to go and look and find these things. So again, don't feel pressured to get furniture right away. Like you will, that will come, you know, the fact that you got your apartment is a huge accomplishment. So just take your time don't like rush into getting all this beautiful furniture especially if nobody's gonna be there like if you're not gonna have company or guests it's really not even necessary to have a couch um, but you know when it does come time for, like if someone moves in with you if you get a roommate or whatever the case may be you might not want to have to share your chair so get a couch or whatever you need when it comes to small household items or household items like cleaning supplies and just small things that you know you need like tools like a hammer a measuring tape dollar tree is going to be your best friend and it sucks not every state has dollar trees i should have done my research and like gave you the demographics but who does that um <laughs> you can look up and see if you, you you'll know if you have a dollar tree literally everything is a dollar or less in those stores and they sell everything cleaning supplies tissue paper towels um a plunger laundry baskets bleach um shit like measuring tapes fucking tools extension cords anything or almost everything food anything you might need is sold in dollar tree so when i say that is going to be your best friend literally half of the stuff i bought before i even came here um, i got from dollar tree just because i knew i would need it and it's like it's better to go and get it because it's so cheap um like again cleaning supplies and like bottles and just small things plastic forks and knives and plates and cups and trash bags and aluminum foil like it, the list goes on check out your local dollar tree or dollar store whatever is equivalent to your in your city or state go ahead and use that you don't have to go to walmart but and, and i know a lot of people are probably like oh walmart is cheap not compared to dollar tree like you can't go in walmart and find a lot of shit for a dollar like unless it's on clearance and it's broken or something's wrong with it Dollar Tree is going to be your best friend. Even like cooking utensils, spatulas, bowls. I mean, whatever you need, Dollar Tree is going to be your best friend. So do not be afraid to go and indulge. And I mean, you can get literally all the cleaning supplies and like um, essentials and like utensils that you need for under $50 at Dollar Tree. And that's like really under like $25. That's just for those things. But you know, with everything you might need, you might be spending around like 50 or so bucks. But when it comes to hanging things on the wall and like painting or making any changes or anything like that and decorating... You want to make sure you know what the limits are for the um, the property. And again, this should be acknowledged in what I was saying before with, you know, the lease and like knowing what you can and cannot do. Because a lot of them do allow you to paint, but some of them don't. And then if you do, there's like a certain um, standard like you have to pay or there's like only a few colors you can use or only a certain wall you can paint. So just when it comes to decorating and furnishing your apartment, you want to be careful and not like put holes in the wall or anything. Um, I use thumbtacks for everything. Even the lights back here, those are hung up with uh, thumbtacks. I don't know if you can see those. Yeah, you can see those. But, um, you know, I can take them down whenever I want. I just, you know, whatever. But I just like to have things like that um, for my own reasons. But if you're looking to hang up like heavy pictures and stuff like that, you know, 
look into getting those hooks that don't really put holes in the walls because again they will charge you for that later and that's where your security deposit is at risk because you damage their property unless they say it's okay which most of them do not now we're gonna get to the last thing which is definitely not the least important bills uh, this is unavoidable you're always gonna have bills you know yeah all those fees we discussed in the beginning will most likely be a one-time thing but you're gonna have your monthly bills that you have to keep track of and if this is your first time moving out this is extremely important because you probably aren't used to paying all of your bills on your own like rent and things like that now um, I didn't mention this before but you will most likely have to purchase renters insurance which is basically like car insurance you know like if anything happens to the property whatever you're covered blah 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 um, I mine's only like $11 a month and it was definitely required to move in so you most likely cannot move in without renters insurance or some kind of proof of that so that's another thing to consider but back to bills when it comes to organizing and remembering how to pay bills and things you may already have this down but this is just a tip that I learned um, and I actually feel like I got this somewhere from YouTube but I'm not sure so I have this little folder again this came from Dollar Tree this was a dollar or Walmart no I think it was Dollar Tree and I just have everything labeled so I have my rent, lights, which also is electric, internet, car note, phone bill, and groceries, and gas. Now this isn't really a bill, it's more of like an expense, but it's important to keep it in here. So um, I like to get, I know a lot of people are like electronic nowadays and they're like, oh, you know, save the trees, let's go green. I still like to get my paper copies of the most important bills because you never know. Anything can happen where a website could shut down and you need to show proof that you paid rent, whatever, I don't know. So I like to get my bills um in the mail still just so i can put them in this folder and know exactly what i'm paying each month um again i have one for rent lights whatever and yeah so it's really cool to have this and if you want to there is a method that i've seen going around where people actually put their like paper money i don't really use that i you know just pay everything online for the most part but if you like to pay your bills with money this is also good because you can literally every month before you even get the bill you can go ahead and put how much you think it might cost because most likely they're about the same um rent you know things like that don't really fluctuate mine fluctuates like five or ten bucks based on how much water we use or the sewage or whatever um but you can go ahead and put your money in here so that way when the bill comes you take it out whether you pay it electronically go put it back in your bank account or um you know whatever you have to do but that'll give you like a visual it'll show you that you're actually paying your bills which you should know that but it gives you some kind of encouragement so you can know hey all this money that I'm spending on bills is not just actually going to waste it's for me to continue to live here and not get arrested or get put out I don't know why you would get arrested but that was just an example but anywho that's all I had for now um I wish I had more fun tips but this is just like the real hard fact shit that you need to know and I want you to know so at the um or after all of this after this whole video i just wanted to see if you guys would be interested in like an apartment series i live in denver colorado um when i was before i moved here i moved from columbus georgia which is a pretty huge transition it's like i don't even know how many miles but it took like 25 hours total to get here we did stop but that's like two days or no that's a day like a whole day if you were to drive nonstop. But anyway, before I got here, I was looking on YouTube and things like that to see if anyone had, you know, an apartment tour or like a, you know, an overview of like the apartments in this area or that area. And I couldn't really find anything. I found a few, but they were more of like trying to sell the property, not really just say, hey, this is what's, what's up. You know, it was more of like a, again, a sales perspective, not really a, hey, I'm here to help you. This is what they have perspective. So if you guys are interested in um like apartment tours i can go there's so many apartments this community or this city is growing at a very rapid pace um so they're building apartments constantly there's complexes um there are condos houses whatever so if you guys are actually interested and in, you would actually watch you know a, a series of different type of apartments if you have a specific type of apartment that you want to see in this area or just you know based on any area let me know and i'm actually interested in going around to film um or schedule different apartment tours for different types of apartments or different types of living situations and i'll film it and upload it for you guys but you have to let me know that's what you want um otherwise i'm just gonna you know do it at my leisure or you know if i still feel like it, i'll definitely upload them but that's something i was interested in and i feel like it kind of follow it would follow up nicely with this video so that was a lot i know but i feel like it's really important so if you took something from this video you know if you have questions whatever the case may be 
mask. I'm sorry, this lighting is weird. I'm used to filming like, I don't know, whatever. Whatever the case may be, just let me know. So thank you so much for watching. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video or you at least took some advice from it. Um, again, leave any comments or concerns or questions or anything below. I love feedback um, and I can only react to what you give me. So with that being said, again, thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you in my next video. Let me know how you feel about that series of apartment tours or anything else you'd like for me to further elaborate on. Thank you. I love you. Peace and blessings. You have a great, prosperous life. Good luck on your apartment journey. I'm out. I'm out. Till next time, so long, farewell to you, my friend. Goodbye for now, until we meet again. Okay, I'm out for real, bye.